it's been a very long time. Um, when was the last time Solidarity played here? I don't even remember. It's like I played here also once with Kane's offering, uh, but I think that's like 10 years 2015 or something. Kane's offering. When did you play the whole Beastie album here? I don't remember. It's like maybe. Like, so maybe it's not that long ago. I don't know. But yeah, and then somebody ate a bat, and then you know, like two years, everything goes to shit. Yeah. It's like a dream, a bad dream. Actually, a good dream. I, I have to be honest. I, I didn't mind so much. I, I don't think I would have had a burnout, but it was very nice to, to have this break. Uh, and we were quite lucky, Stradivarius, I mean, the Stradivarius, the band, because we had planned 2020 to be, anyway, like kind of off year. Oh, okay. We finished the album, you know, like it comes out, let's say, end of 2020, beginning 2021 or something like that. It didn't quite happen that way, but you know. Like. No! <laughs> I mean, some of the material, we started writing maybe 2017 or 2018, but it's mutated so much. It's very funny when you listen to the demos, uh, the early demos. Of course, the songs are very completely different songs. Like, so I, I think we really did it a different way this time than, than previous previous albums with Matthias. Like with T Tolki days, was a completely different ball game. But yeah. this uh, Matthias era composition process was very different from this one. We did very, very different way this time. Which I, I think we were kind of bored. We, we released this album called uh, Eternal. It was a two, two, 2015, and to me, it was like, uh, you know, I don't, I'm, I wasn't sure if I wanted to do it that way anymore. Uh, and I guess everybody felt the same way because everybody kind of gathered like little cats doing their, their thing for many years. Uh, we, we kept playing live, of course, but uh, we didn't record any new albums because. And I have to say, it's also a little bit reality, so the recording business playing into this also. Uh, because, frankly, there's no money in recorded music anymore. It's like. So, I felt anyway, if we make a new album. Everybody should be completely convinced that this is we, we need to make it. It's not like oh, let's make a new album. It's like let's make like a bunch of songs, and the, you know we we made something like 25 finished or half finished songs, yeah. and we picked like the best the, the ones everybody liked the best. So I think that's kind of the way to do it actually. It's like basically we said at least three guys should be in the same room when we try to write it because the previous albums was getting more and more the first the first album matthias is polaris actually we were kind of writing we had this like sort of writing session but after that everybody's busy and you know like you can almost write by dropbox and, and everybody's doing their own ideas like in a silo yeah uh, so of course i don't know how to sing matthias doesn't know how to sing words or shit either so you just put some synth melody you, you cannot imagine what it would sound like singing and I think the results are better if you get the feedback directly from the singer yeah. like you look him in the eyes you tell him you have to sing this like and he's like no this is crap <laughs> <laughs> and I, I think you get better results because uh, you don't get that from Dropbox or WhatsApp yeah. you're like oh can you sing this lyrics you know I wrote them and of course Usually you're strapped for time and you're writing the lyrics the last. Uh, and it's kind of like, you know, the, the, the tail is wagging the doil, dog a bit. Like you, you set the schedule and it's like the album should be released. And, you know, you, you, we, very often we had the songs ready, but they were kind of like in some sort of demo state. So what we did now is like just really work on the songs. Yeah. Uh, get the lyrics ready. Like, I mean, most of the lyrics were written long before we, Timo sang them. Right. So, yes, we had time to practice them and he had, we had time to tell us, fuck off, this is stupid, I'm not singing this shit, you know, like, you know, then you change things. Uh, and it was like a lot of discussions, I wouldn't say fights, but a lot of healthy discussions. Yeah, it's for sure. Yeah. 
uh, my recording was still with piecemeal because of course when we actually did record it it was like somehow corona winter of 2021 2022 and matthias had to go to brazil and it was like this completely scattered thing again but at least the writing was done and to me that's more important than recording yeah um, the recording you can do a little bit more by dropbox or whatever but i think the writing there's a certain value to this turning things around and go yeah, like face this face. this doesn't fucking work you know like let's just put this away and we put like very many songs aside that i think like fuck this we should work more on this one but we you know we should just put also like there was like a stated goal we only make 12 or something songs we don't do this let's work on 20 songs and, uh, and we just put aside the ones that that seemed like too much work <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And we save those maybe for la next time. But there's some really good stuff in the ones that were put aside also. They just need more work. And yeah. So I'm, I have a hope that this sort of workflow will work also in the future. We can make bigger, tur quicker turnaround than six, seven years. Yeah, it's the, the large thing is due to Matthias because I think he likes that stuff. And he was fiddling a lot with the music stuff and, you know, the guitar parts. Uh, but I think I like it in a way. I mean, to me, like when he got in the band, it was a little bit this thing, let's do something different, surprise us, you know, that, what, what do you want to do, you know? Like, and of course, uh, I was talking about this earlier today, actually. I mean, the band could have taken a different path where we became like more of a nostalgia band and we would make more material like we did around 2001. But for me, it's kind of boring, you know, it's, it's been done, you know. <laughs> I mean, those albums are still there and people could listen to them. Uh, to me, this is more interesting. And it's more like, more of a process. You kind of like, you get surprises. Yeah, I mean, you mean Timo Tolki or you mean Timo Kotka? Yeah. Well, the legacy is like sort of weighing, but I think when I joined Stradivarius, which is like 25 years ago, uh, he was like faxing. I was living in New York at the time and he was like faxing stuff. And he made this like letterhead for Stradivarius. He wanted to be, you know, present this image. And his stated goal of the band was like putting the melody into metal. And he made this like sort of logo. I, I still remember this because I think that's like the that's the main thing behind this band. It's like it's almost like pop sensibility when it comes to the melodies, but then it has like this heavy ground layer that the melodies are on top of. Uh, and I think as long as we don't wear away from that, but of course it doesn't sound like anything that what Toki is doing still now. I mean I think he's more. He's writing the way he's always done. I mean, you've, I guess you've heard this, like Symphonia and quite good stuff. But to me, it's also a little bit, we did that with him already. And, you know, I just want more surprises. Like, uh, so, and we, of course, we, for, for this, in this kind of setting, when we do festival gig, yeah. there's like a certain nostalgia angle to it. And of course, yeah. we play a lot of this material, like, because, uh, um, it's kind of what people, you know, at least people who go there who are my age, they, they might like, oh, it's like I feel like I'm 14 again, you know, I'm, I'm hearing this like speed of light or something. Um, so you have to take that into consideration a little bit too, but... Uh, yeah, I mean, we did a lot of gigs in Tavastia, but yeah. yeah. I mean, it was an exciting time, and uh, I think when you are in the band, you tend to kind of pat yourself on the back and say, oh, we created this movement, you know. But I think you can also say that we were sort of riding this wave of metal resurgence. Uh, and there was a couple of other bands around when we started. And I don't count Amorphis because they are a little bit different style of music, but I think there was like Hammerfall, it was like, like you mentioned, Symphony X, like super exciting, somehow in the air, it was like coming back. Yeah. 
because the 90s were a bit of a lost decade. There was this grunge and yeah. in the States, if you happen to be in the States, it was like only R&B and rap music. <laughs> <laughs> we know. Uh, it's like a, it never came back in the States really. There, there was like kind of more this like new metal around the millennium shift. But this kind of more classic metal never came back or melodic metal never came back uh, there. Yeah, it was, I mean, I had like almost like six years in between there yeah. when I was doing other stuff too, but I don't know, I just approached it the same way I did everything. I was just, oh, it sounds kind of good, you know, like, uh, I don't know where it's going to go, but, but you know, <laughs> what, what the hell, like, Excellent. surprise me, you know, same thing again, like, yeah. hey, well, this is good. But I, it's actually funny uh, because when Tolki contacted me, I had actually heard of Stratovarius before. Uh, because I was sitting in this Dream Theater's management office back in the day when you still had management offices like yeah. in Manhattan. And it's like, I got this thing in the mail from Finnish band, you know, like, and I think it was fourth dimension record. And we put it on, it's like, this is actually kind of good, you know. And I, I guess Tolkien was like peppering people, like, do you want to manage us, you know, like. Yeah. So, so actually I had, I had heard the band before he even contacted me. So it was like, kind of like, hmm. I know this band. <laughs> right, because when we have seen Set of Warriors for the first time? Uh, Nivala. No? No? Guess year. This year? Uh, guess, guess the year. The year? 1996. <laughs> 1980. 89. Oh, okay. Giants of Rock. Okay. Yeah. Like old, old, old Set of Warriors. The first one. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how many. It's like a hockey team. It's like. <laughs> how many? How many? Yeah, the team is there. The name is the same, but yeah, exactly. uh, the, the, the players change. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I like that in a way. Well, I like this kind of music in a way, and it's like it's. I don't know. I think. I don't know if he would have, and of course this is like a terrible thing to say, but I don't know how long we would have lasted if, if, if this Tolkien lineup would have stayed yeah. the way it was. Like, I think it was like, what he did, he's like so, sort of a very feeling person. I think he felt that this, this is going to go to shit anyway. Yeah. I'm just leaving. You know, like, he's like a, this kind of human being with a giant radar antenna, you know, like, so, so I think he was feeling that something this is not going to work in five years anyway. So I think that change, it was of course brutal. Uh, but you know, like, like I think also with this album title, like we survived it. We have survived a lot of things like a cockroach. <laughs> the strato roach is like... <laughs> Rats and cockroaches. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. After but the nuclear war, yeah, the I think, only ex ex existence of stuff. <laughs> yeah, I think that for me anyway, the, the the guiding star, is, and it's not much of a guiding star, but I like having the surprises. Like, and uh, Matthias for sure is full of surprises. He's like super, super musical guy. And it's to me when he was like joining the band, I was like, "Fuck, we have to get this guy in the band!" Like, because I, I mean, you could tell he's like super musical. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I was just thinking, what could come from this? I don't know. I don't know what the fuck he wants to do. Like, but of course it's going to be different. It's not. Go it's going to be this like '90s cock rock because it's not what he. Yes. What he wanted, you know, like, so, oh, okay. surprise us, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, for me, it was fun. Uh, I mean, that's like an institution and it's like a church or something. So I think, I mean, he's told me stories which I'm not allowed to tell, but, but they have a, they have this like sort of bubble of, of like, believers almost and it's a uh, kind of cool and kind of scary at the same time <laughs> but uh, I don't know I, th I think he he enjoyed it but in the end <coughs> he had to say no to to the gigs now this summer because basically of family reasons like uh, so I, I, how long was he with the band like two years or something like this yeah. and of course there was COVID in between but yeah uh, 
they are like very special people. Um, that's like some people who really believe in this medal. I'm not that kind of believer in medal, like 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 these guys. Uh, super serious. Like. I wasn't a huge fan, no. Like, but I mean, the singer is like one of the best singers in the world for this yeah. kind of music. It's like, yeah, it's like a. I, I put him like with Ronnie Dio like somehow on the same level like so of course when you talk about the other heart and soul of a band of course he's like delivering every night uh, yeah. or whatever new recordings they make he's delivering so I think as long as he is alive and he stays in the band of course they have a future somehow you know yeah. I think what I hear now is that there might not be more trolls, but it's more like, you know, this COVID stuff. I think Richie doesn't like this, you know, this like paperwork and, you know, you have to, you have to get vaccination certificates and you have to have tests and all this stuff. Like, I mean, he really hates the kind of bureaucracy, like the, like the plague. So, what well, maybe after COVID, something, if, if it disappears. So, uh, I always wanted to go to Japan with that lineup. Uh, and I know that there's this Japanese promoter that's been trying to get us there. Okay. No, I don't think so. Like, I think that was just more of a you know, fun thing. Like, okay. You should have a single. Uh, well, I think Richie, in a way, is like thinking more like it was in the 60s or 70s or 80s. That of course you have a product to sell, also like a like a recorded product, which of course nowadays, like I said, with the industry, the the live industry is somehow the tail now, which is wagging the dog of the recorded music yeah. industry. Like so, but I think you, it's a fun thing, of course. Like and I know a lot of people listen to those and. I was already with my connection to Dio. I was only already in this family tree. Yeah. Some people have this like purple rainbow family tree thing. So I was somehow there. And now I guess I'm. There's a branch going somehow also like. Yeah. But yeah, it's of course a very special thing, and they have like. They have their own little bubble of fans too, that. You don't realize it's like pur old purple clan and stuff. Uh, you see. You see stuff you wouldn't see at our concerts, like. But the, the demographic is like, of course, a little bit older. Like, you have like 60 or 70 year old people there also, like. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, but I count it as like, and I think Richie does also. It's like somehow a little bit nostalgia thing, um, which I don't mind. I mean, it's, it's a nice thing to be part of. A lot of people are very happy. Yeah, I, th that's what I mean a bit. I think the critics would be people who don't see it, you know, maybe probably y younger people who have listened to these classic albums from the 70s and that becomes like canon, you know, it becomes how it should be. Uh, and if, if you consider it like a rainbow cover band, we are a terrible rainbow cover band. It doesn't sound at all like... <laughs> doesn't sound like rainbow. So, of course, if you expect to have this like, you know, long live rock and roll album sound or something. Yeah. It doesn't sound at all like that. Yeah, that's of course, when you're the singer, of course, you, your physical, it becomes even more intimately tied to the, to the music. Uh, with Richie's playing, I mean, he, he basically gave, gave like rock music the finger for 25 years. I, I think he was like with this purple and then like I'm done with this shit, you know, never again I want to hear, hear like yeah, yeah. <laughs> distorted guitar like never again <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. and then you know he, he made this band with his wife and it's like oh, fuck. yeah this is the this loot this is where, it, that's where it's at yeah. so of course I mean it takes a little bit also time to get into that world again and uh, I think the first couple of shows we did he was he was just dipping his toe. Then he's like, oh, I kind of like it. I remember this now. I kind of like this. <laughs> Turning it up the amp a bit, like. Um, 
But I remember we had, or he had discussions with this drummer, if he should have two double, like double bass drums or not. And he's like, no, no double bass drums. We are not Motley Crew. You know, this is fucking bullshit. But, but, and the drummer was like, but you know, this is like, you know, cozy in the double bass. I was like, no, 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 no. But then finally, okay, you know, I put the double bass. <laughs> so it, it, he really had this like, both feet in the Blackmore's Night yeah. kind of spirit. And then like dipping the toe and then a little bit like, well, I kind of like this a bit, you know. So. I think she, she has a lot to say, but I think she's mind reading Richie very well. Oh, okay. Is it, is it working? Yeah. I think it's like they have like a long relationship with, with uh, Black Horse Knight. And I think she's kind of like able to, to mind read him, you know. And of course, she acts as like this buffer. Yeah. Which is like. You can imagine the amount of the bullshit he gets, like, oh, can you do this or can you do that? Like, yeah. So, uh, I think she's actually kind of a good manager. Like, uh, she used to be school teacher. Uh -huh. I guess she's like, she used this like classroom of, of <laughs> stupid kids. And, and uh, you know, she can be quite firm and, you know, I wouldn't say a bit of an asshole, but she can definitely, she definitely has like a bite. <laughs> Just like a little bit of a bark, a little bit of a bite. But to me, she was always very nice. Like, yeah, she... Well, I, I, can, I can tell that, you know, some people asking unreasonable things, she will just tell them, like, no! <laughs> you know? but of course, that's the kind of manager you should have. Like. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I remember that there was a rumor that any interview in the Blackboard's Night days, like before 2015 or whatever, if they mentioned Rainbow, they would just like, the interview is over! Like, that's out! <laughs> like, out! <laughs> He would just leave. <laughs> well, she was mind reading, I think. <laughs> I think that was probably how Richie was feeling, and she was like, she has this like connection. It's like, yeah, this is yeah. what I should do, and I'm probably in mind. It's like, <laughs> well, I don't want to hear about this shit. Like, what can you do? Yeah. <laughs> I, okay. I, I think it's like, when, when he, he really went out of this rock stuff in the 90s, I think he meant it. He was like, don't, don't want to have this anymore. Like, uh, so for me, it was a surprise also. I know, I know Jolene Turner had approached Carol about something, and it was just like shot down in flames, you know, like, yeah. she went to the press like, this Jordan Turner is like, <laughs> just like some of blabbermouth kind of. <laughs> I know. You know I, uh, dumpster fire. <laughs> yesterday I spoke with Jordan Turner like one hour in the same place, and yeah. uh, there was lots of stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I will yeah, put it I, all here. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, I like Carol. I think she's cool. Okay. I, I think she, she, I think she does not do anything that Richie would not kind of feel. Absolutely. But of course, he doesn't really know what she's doing. I think he's just like, yeah, do your thing. And she mind treats him, and that's it. That's it. Uh, there's a new album, I believe. Okay. Yes, I haven't quite heard it, but I guess there's something out. And um, I heard about this recent. Uh, there was something with Jeff Scott Soto. I I met Jeff in Atlanta a few weeks ago. Like he was like. Telling the story, I guess you've seen it on Blabbermouth or something. Also, everybody's on Blabbermouth. Like, I'm happy that we are not on Blabbermouth anymore. Like, no, no more Blabbermouth. No, no, no. One. It's not going to no. Blabbermouth. <laughs> no, no, but that's okay. <laughs> but uh, I guess it's like he had made. Well, you, I guess you've heard the story. There was like some something where he said like, "Oh, I, singers are just bullshit. I made all the albums." music and you know it doesn't matter who's singing i mean you know like type of thing you know i believe that's kind of how he feels uh this thing about the jeff being at the show i don't know i mean it sounds crazy to me but i guess it's i think it's also his manager which is also his wife yeah uh, i think she's doing her best 
to kind of isolate Ingve from his past, like in a way. Uh, and I don't know, I haven't spoken to him in very many years, but I do know one thing, a lot of people is slagging this April, this, this wife. I have to say one thing about her, I mean, she, she managed to get him to stop drinking. And I think if not for that, we would now be sitting here like, oh yeah, that guy drank himself to death, you know, what a, what a genius he was. He died in 2005 from this you know, liver cancer or something. Yeah, yeah. But uh, whatever, whatever stuff she's doing, you know, posting on social media, Jeff Scott Soto is like an asshole, you know, whatever. But I, I always give her credit for, for making sure, you know, I think she was like kind of like, eh. I don't know, I mean, he sings kind of, I mean, he's, he's a mu musical guy, he sings in tune, but he, he, he's not like a singer. Yeah. <coughs> I mean, he should, he should let somebody else sing, I think. But it's Ingvi, I mean, what the fuck, you're not going to tell him what to do. No, it's no, like... no he, said he, does, he doesn't need anybody, he's Ingvi. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And he said, also said, uh, less is not more, more is more. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know, I mean, I, I'm... I'm not going to complain because I, it, I'm not like a fan of what he's doing and stuff like that. It's like, oh, I'm so disappointed by the last album. But I think he should have like a producer and a singer that make some albums. Uh, but then again, it ties together what we, what we said before. I mean, there's no money in that. So who would pay for it? And yeah. Who would pay for a producer and a singer? Like, I don't know. Yeah, I think the first one I wouldn't even count as a single. It's like sort of a teaser. Okay. It's like a little bit more complex track. We released like on Spotify in the lyric video. But yeah, the first kind of more accessible song was coming out on Friday. And I think we might have a video for that at some point too. Like, have you filmed already? Yeah, we have, but it's, they are still working on it. On it maybe like. Okay. Like, yeah, let's see. But maybe. So it's still in the raw state. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then we have supposedly one more single in August. And I think that's going to be the same thing. It's going to be like audio release and then single release later. Uh -huh. uh, I mean, video release later. It's like audio single, Spotify, and then like video on YouTube or something. I think we are talking about this. I think, you know, four months ago, we didn't know anything. But we, we planned this like short finish tour in November and we have a few things. We have like some festivals, like some boat festival in, in November also. And then of course like a bunch of summer festivals now. Yeah. We are playing Wacken. Uh, I wouldn't count that as like touring plans, but we really have to strategize what to do next year. And it's a little bit based on this pandemic again. Does it, does it flare up again or not? Like, yeah. Because so many of our friends in other bands it's like, oh, we have a great tour, and then it's like being postponed like four times. Yeah. I think some people are kind of losing patience. Yeah, that's like, of course, just a very... Yep. That's like, a, you know, something happening that week. But of course, there's been like long tours that's been postponed. You know, I think like Sabaton was postponed like twice. They had like a big tour. Now there's like Halloween and Hammerfall thing. Oh. They were supposed to do start like in, in April or something, March or April. Okay. It's all all now moved to next year and I think that's like the second time that got moved. Okay. So I think the whole industry is a little bit like what happens now? I don't really quite know. <laughs> and I think we just have to figure out what everybody's avails are like next year. Because So But we probably probably we should go to South America, we should go to Japan maybe like uh -huh. the Japanese they seem to like having like a new release to hang up the tour on, like we do a few dates. Well, like I said, we had planned to, to have very easy 2020. Yeah. Only thing we had scheduled was this prog power in, US, in the United States 2020 in September. And that obviously got cancelled. Uh, other than that, it was like summer festivals that easily got moved also. But we didn't have like any like bus tour spectral extravaganza yeah. planned. Like so we were fortunate more fortunate than a lot of other bands that had like oh we had this like 
60 show tour it got had to get moved yeah. and i think you know for, from the logistics people of course moving something like three times is super annoying like every tour bus booking you have every venue hold every like airline ticket everything just like you have to, yeah. have to do it again and of course there are also costs involved uh, and i'm talking also like like sort of mental or psychological costs how many times can you like call a venue up and say like oh we'd like to move it now like it's like yeah, forget yeah. it we are a restaurant now we don't we don't we don't do shows anymore like it's like there's like and you i think you can see it this year also not in only in the music industry you see it in the airline industry you have fired all your baggage handlers because volume was so low then all of a sudden everybody wants to travel oh we don't have any baggage handlers like and it's the same in the music industry but people have kind of forgotten how to do this the buses have been sold yeah you know like they are now like Croatia tourist bus or something they yeah. they ripped all the beds out and it's like something else yeah. so yeah and, but you see that on all, all levels uh, I think stuff like PA companies there's no real way to repurpose a PA I mean you, you just keep it in storage you pay for the storage you hope for the best but the bus of course definitely and you know crew people it's like forget this shit I'm like now I'm a medical assistant or I'm like I work in the law office or I work in the restaurant or I do something else with my life instead of waiting for somebody to call me to go do some teching or you know yeah. so of course yeah. there's like this this kind of like you can't like start it on a dime yeah. and I think you see because we have so many friends in bands you see on Facebook all the time like oh we are stuck in Brussels oh the flights are fucking cancelled it's like a strike and this whole thing is like everywhere the gridlock um, and it's of course we fortunately we only had like one cancellation this summer for some festival in Turku uh, okay. <coughs> but so far so good no kombud 